It's a bull. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Waterdale by the Sea. Got the uh, live LBTS cam up today. What a beautiful morning out. 67 degrees. This is why I love this little town and this is why I love Florida. This kind of weather and uh, uh, just look at that sky. Just absolutely gorgeous. Well, let's move into today's spot prices. Uh, a coin says a bull. It looks like we've got that today. We've got a little bull market going on here. Uh, at least for this morning. Haven't seen a smack down yet. And uh, of course, my theme for the year, this upcoming year in 2022, is going to be think for yourself and question authority. And I'm going to throw you a couple daily sayings as well. Today's daily saying is the greater the power, the more dangerous the abuse. And uh, some folks say, hey, Brian, you're tying politics and economics in with gold and silver. Well, of course we are, because it has a very strong role to play in where gold and silver goes. You know, terrible politics, terrible economics equal good prices for gold and silver. We're not quite seeing the, the results of that yet, but I believe gold and silver markets are lagging a little bit behind. Sometimes they, they telegraph things, but they also lag behind, I think, when it comes to the money supply. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's take a look at today's markets here. And uh, what do we got going on here? 18, boy, it keeps moving up here, charging up. 18, 2509 right now, uh, which appears to be close to the high. It must have been just recently here. Uh, low of 1813.27, a high of 1825.18 overnight since yesterday's New York closes. Uh, again, we're sitting at that high of 1825.09. I suspect, again, it's in that New York COMEX, the crooked COMEX market, and uh, it's just a rebound uh, going on from all this constant monkey hammering and pounding that gold and silver has seen for some time. It's like a rubber band that keeps snapping back to these levels. And uh, let's take a look at uh, silver as well. Uh, 2288 being the low, 2327, and uh, currently sitting at 2327, which is the high for the day uh, so far. Uh, and platinum at 969, uh, 35 of low, and 991.73. Looks like it's nearing that thousand dollar mark in palladium. Who cares? Because nobody ever buys it. <laughs> so, uh, kind of interesting things going here. You know, I tell my silver stackers and my friends that really don't buy a lot of gold, and I think you should mix it up with gold and silver, by the way. If you just own. Um, if you just own silver only, really mix it up with gold and silver. That's my opinion. You should mix the two metals. Hey, platinum as well. You know, have, be a little diversified. You know, everything, silver and platinum will uh, ultimately follow the price of gold. There's no doubt about that. Gold is the leader in this uh, 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 marketplace of uh, precious metals. Uh, palladium, that's a whole different story. I think that a lot has to do with uh, um, Manipulation by the uh, uh, palladi you know the palladium and the, the uh, people that control that market. It's a very very small marketplace. I think it's mostly Canadians, uh, Russians, and uh, uh, who else? South Africans in the palladium market. So very small bourse, and they really control that price quite tightly. And they do with platinum as well. Uh, but uh, I really think any of you silver guys, I know a lot of you just stack silver only, but I would recommend uh, mixing it up. You know, one of the things I hear, well, you know, gold's so expensive, I can only buy a tiny piece of it. You know, I can only spend like $200 or something like that. And you know, I can buy a 10-ounce bar for, you know, less than 300 right now. And uh, I can get only a tiny piece of gold for, for you know, like the size of a dime, you know, a one-tenth uh, eagle or something equivalent for for two hundred and twenty-five dollars, two thirty-five, whatever the heck they are right now, you know. And I know visually, it really is a stark difference when you look at two hundred and twenty-five dollars worth of gold and two hundred and twenty-five dollars worth of silver. Uh, and it's easy to kind of confuse that. Well, I want the God. I got more in my hand. It just feels like more. However, you know, twenty a twenty percent upswing. If you have a hundred dollars worth of gold or two hundred dollars worth of uh, gold, and you have two hundred dollars worth of silver, regardless of the size of the item, you know, the uh, the mass of the gold, or, you know, versus silver, um, you know, if gold goes up ten percent, that's still ten percent on your two hundred dollars. That's two twenty, whether it's regardless whether it's silver or gold. Um, so. You know, and gold does lead the way. So for you folks out there that are just silver stackers only, I, I, in my opinion, you kind of should mix it up a little bit. Throw some silver in there, throw some platinum, and it is very relative. You know, it's all relative to the to the amount it goes up. If you two hundred dollars worth of gold is just as good as two hundred dollars worth of silver. I mean, if gold goes up ten percent, you, you and silver, it's the same thing. So don't hesitate to uh, mix these metals up a little bit. It's nice to have a, a little diversification when it comes to uh, gold, silver, and platinum. Now, when it comes to my opinion on what's uh, going to happen, I, th I can see silver at this level a much easier double up than I can see gold at a double up. Uh, and what that means, I can see silver much easier at this time because I think silver has been held down 
uh, so much greater than uh, the price of gold has over the years. You know, the monkey hammering on silver is still it's just pretty crazy. We've been talking about these huge short positions. We've been talking about the uh, new, uh, put, you know, what we assume is a Bank of America uh, uh, mega, mega 800 million ounce short position in derivatives and leases. Um, and there's only two reasons they would have done that, in my opinion. Either, they, either they're really stupid, which is a possibility, and or they were instructed to do it by some kind of uh, official entity. All right, there's the two reasons that BOFA would have such a huge short position. Again, indeed, if this is uh, correct, that they are the holders of this 800 million ounces uh, short position, at least derivatives, folks, the most dangerous way they can own it. Uh, so again, it's either two things. They're either completely stupid at BOFA and or uh, they're doing it at the behest of a government entity. Now that's kind of what I, that's, that's more of a conspiratorial view and very possibly could be true. Don't, don't forget conspiracies, uh, just because something's in the conspiracy level doesn't mean it's tr not true. Um, you know, governments and media have painted conspiracies as being something bad, but you know, don't forget government uses uh, uh, conspiracy to throw people in prison forever. So, <laughs> uh, you know, it's one of those things that do as we say, not as we do. Don't use the word conspiracy yourself because you look like an idiot, but we're okay to use it. But no less, um, the thought is that uh, BOFA is either, uh, again, the opinion of a lot of people that BOFA is either just stupid uh, and is willing to uh, go belly up and of course, we know they're not going to belly up. So maybe that's part of the reason they know the government's not let them, not going to let them fall on that position. Uh, or if they did make a wrong move, the government's going to allow it to happen. Again, the other thought is is that it's a government entity that's that's asked Bofa to take this large silver short position. But again, why why lease why leasing it? Why derivatives? It just doesn't make sense if that's correct. No less, a lot of funky stuff going on here, folks. Uh, and BOFA is too big to fail and too big to jail, obviously. We know that these people are allowed to break laws um, only because uh, uh, the government makes too much money off of it, and that's a fact. Well, let's move in and see when these markets have moved here. There's so much to talk about. I'm going to, uh, there's a couple good articles here I want to go over and a few other things. We're going to go over the charts here as we get uh, M1, M2. I'm kind of confused between the two a little bit. Uh, maybe some of you can make some comments in there or put in the comment section what you think when we get to that. Uh, let's take a look at, I'm going to do a quick refresh. Of course, we know exactly when this up market occurred. It's occurred where all the activity in uh, gold and silver has been happening lately, primarily in COMEX, uh, especially silver for years and years. But gold seems to be, you know, making a lot of uh, uh, runs ups and, uh, you know, runs down in the, this uh, New York NYMEX market in the morning. And if you've been watching my videos, this is a pattern that we recognize for at least two or three months or longer now. Uh, the monkey hammering and the uh, price increases were typically around holidays in the past uh, or uh, during thinly traded markets in the middle of the night, maybe on Globex. Uh, but then I guess it became too obvious, especially after that Sunday night smackdown. When was that, three months ago, four months ago? You guys remember that when gold almost got hammered $100 on a Sunday night, probably in a Globex market, uh, which is owned by Crooked Comics and their uh, uh, complicit CFTC government partners that allow them to do this stuff. Again, this is my opinion, the opinion of a lot of people out there, millions actually now. Uh, in fact, uh, Ted Butler was just talking about uh, uh, how prevalent it is now. COMEX is losing their credibility in a major way with the general public. I don't think, are they really that deft that they don't really get it, that they don't realize that the word is out, that they're, that they're silver and they're probably other markets as well, but, but their silver market is so frickin' crooked with these large uh, commercial short positions, especially like with BOFA, again, uh, with the supposed 800 million ounces that they're holding. And, and COMEX allows it. Uh, and uh, again, CFTC being their uh, uh, governing uh, agency, and who governs the CFTC? The Agricultural Board. And who governs them? Some really stupid politicians, folks. You've got to take a look at who sits on the Agricultural Board. Uh, just Google it. Trust me on this. And these are the people that are, uh, oversee the CFTC. And I don't know what the F the CFTC does. They're either stupid or complicit when it comes to this COMEX monkey hammering. Uh, but I digress. We talk about this all the time. I sound like a broken record, and I do apologize.
apologize. However, we need to repeat this. It's very, very important uh, that we think for ourselves, question authority, which I've done my whole life pretty much. I think it's made me a better person, and it'll make, uh, you know, it'll make your children better people. And teach your kids to question authority always, always. Uh, even question yourself, you know, question your narrative, you know, because your narrative may not be your own as well. It may have been spoon-fed to you since you were a child, like the Easter Bunny, uh, Santa Claus, and all these kind of things, uh, uh, and uh, patriotism to some degree. Now, I'm a patriot. I, you know what I love? I love my, I love this country, I love the beauty of it. I love the people in it. Um, we, we are the melting pot of the world. We are, uh, until you get divisive motherfuckers like we have in office today, uh, mostly. And that's the problem with a, a two-party duopoly, a party-sharing duopoly. I'm hoping that we get some more in there. Wow, I'm really digressing off into politics there. Sorry, folks. Uh, let's take a look at the silver markets, of course, in the 24-hour charts. We'll see that New York, same thing. Boom, there we go. Uh, so most of the activity has been happening in the uh, uh, New York NYMEX markets in the morning. And uh, I kind of equate it to like a rubber band. I think that these big short positions that have been monkey hammering gold and silver in the NYME again, again in the NYMEX, COMEX markets uh, starting at 8.20 in the morning for the last two or three months, uh, I think they're working real hard. You see this right here? Uh, imagine this is a rubber band, this long red line. I'm going to use uh, what it was at yesterday's. Uh, imagine this is a long rubber band, and then you're, you're snapping it down like this. Uh, and uh, hope, you know, what the short positions are doing is they might be filling at these lower levels, I think. I'm not quite sure if they're able to, if, you know, it's done so quickly. But uh, I think that the, the hope of these big uh, commercial banks, my, from what I've heard, I think Ted Butler or someone has said that uh, their, their all-in price is 18 or 20, I think it may be $20 per ounce, I'm not quite sure, but let's say 18 to $20 per ounce. Ted Butler currently says that the, on the silver commercial bank short position, they're currently at like, a, what do you say, an eight and a half million, million, billion dollar loss if they were just to kind of cash out. This is where they sit today. So they need to kind of keep rubber banding this, pulling this rubber band back. But the problem with pulling a rubber band back is what, folks? This right here, it snaps back. So I think that's exactly what we're seeing in the uh, in the uh, uh, silver markets here is that rubber band being snapped back for multiple reasons. Uh, reason number one is si silver actually has to, there has to be a real product out there and silver is a physical tangible product, okay? And there is issues with above ground availability. Uh, and some people confuse that, well, there's tons of silver, just look at the vaults out there, look at pictures. There's thousand ounce bars by the hundreds. At the, Folks, don't confuse that with there's a lot of silver above ground, okay? Um, there may be a lot of silver above ground, but there's a lot of people that own it, a lot of uses for it, so it's a supply and demand thing. So availability is the word that you need to look at, not like, oh, there's 800 million ounces above ground. Well, if there's 900 million uses for it or people that want it, then that really uh, that's all about availability, folks. So we've got available issues, which I'm, I'm causing this rubber band to snap back consistently. Then you've got the Wall Street apes out there, and you've got people that aren't even Wall Street apes that have gotten the word and have been stacking silver. You know, I'd say 80, 90 percent of my customers that buy silver and have been stacking for years uh, don't even know who Wall Street Silver Apes is. <laughs> I tell them about them, but uh, uh, I mean, it's way bigger than Wall Street Apes. They're out there, they're buying physical, uh, and that has a, a, a drawback. That draws out availability on above ground silver. So this is the reason I think we're seeing this rubber band snap back. And another big reason I've been talking about for a long time is this right here, gold, folks. Uh, gold. Gold is the leader. Uh, whether you're a silver stacker only or platinum or platinum or whatever, not platinum, talk, but platinum, gold really does lead the way. Where gold goes, silver will follow. Uh, speaking of which, let's take a quick look and see what the current uh, uh, ratio is. Give me one second here. 1,825.09 divided by 23.275. We're currently sitting at a 70, as you can see, 78.41, uh, about 78 to 1 ratio, which is pretty good, not bad. Uh, and this is why I think we're kind of like hovering where we are right now. Uh, I believe, I believe really that gold will make the big move up before silver does. I think it's the same thing that we saw kind of in 2020. Uh, gold will make a move of a couple hundred dollars. Silver will kind of sit back there and not move a lot, and then it'll kind of explode to the upside. I mean, that's a potential potentiality in my, my opinion. Uh, but again, uh, I, I believe gold's leading away. I believe gold's going to $2,500 pretty handily. Uh, however, 
as I said earlier, for me, in my opinion, I think it's, we'll see a double up in silver before we see a double up in the price of gold. Uh, but I do see $2,500 gold in our future. I don't know why, it's just in my head, it's just in my, my gut and everything. Again, my opinion, of course, uh, and don't trade on my opinions necessarily. As I've always said right here, not always said, I've been saying this year, think for yourself and question authority. I'm even an authority. I'm an authority in my particular business as far as uh, being a retail and wholesale uh, physical metals trader, okay? Uh, question me. I mean, I, I like it when people do, uh, civilly, of course, <laughs> and it's all about having a civil conversation. You learn more from people that disagree with you than you do from people that agree with you. People that agree with you, you'll never learn anything from. People you disagree with, you will, for two reasons. First off, you'll, you'll either learn something that you, that you thought was correct and they, they instructed you and showed you that it's not correct and or you can also learn by it strengthens say for example the person questions you all right um, what are you going to do most smart people are going to say well maybe I am wrong this is what most smart people do most smart people don't automatically reject the fact that uh, they're wrong they, they take a look and uh, you step outside yourself and you question yourself even because who's the best authority of all yourself so they question yourself and they say maybe I am wrong that's how you learn and, and you will go and you will see well let's see am I wrong what is this person telling me and if you're open-minded and your real goal is to be a smarter bear um, smarter than the average bear then you will always question yourself okay and question others and look for the truth seek the truth uh, even if it's not what you thought it was um, I kind of digress there, but it, you know we're talking about precious metals here, and this all ties in. So I think that the, the price of gold is going to lead the way for uh, silver, and uh, we're going to see higher gold prices, which in turn are going to bring up the, the silver prices as well. And pl I believe palladium is going to do very well. I can see palladium doubling up pretty easily too. Again, my opinion, folks. Uh, let's take a look and see what stock market is doing here. There's my full portfolio, by the way. I asked a few of you last week if you wanted me to talk about my full portfolio a little bit. Uh, I don't want to make these videos too long, so uh, I'll do it once, uh, once a week or so. Uh, my full portfolio, which means these are fake stocks and bonds. I'm not bought into the stock market yet. I'm waiting for the uh, greatest bubble of all time to be to burst and those markets to come down. Then I'm going to look for stocks and, and stocks that I feel have solid uh, potential that. I'm, looking, I'm going to look for companies that really make real products and real services that they sell that makes them profitable. I'm not looking for companies that are doing stock buybacks or just get so much money thrown at them that they go up in value because it's like a Ponzi scheme. I'm looking for people that actually produce things. So here's, uh, I put Ford in here. Someone suggested I put Rivian, Rivian Automotive. Uh, there's my <laughs> uh, Critter stocks, right? Critter 19 stocks. Uh, of course, I probably won't play in this market right here. I just kind of put that up out of curiosity because I noticed that they made a ton of money the last two years, of course. Go figure, right? Uh, food stocks right here. Um, I think that food is kind of recession proof in a way that people have to eat. Uh, being a fisherman, I, I'm looking at a stove of seafoods. Uh, BurgerFi, local company down here, which I think is pretty cool. Who is this? Uh, Leroy Seafood Groups. So you can tell I'm a fisherman. I eat lots of seafood, damn it. And uh, Sundial Growers. This is some. Actually, this is a uh, uh, marijuana stock that one of the uh, readers recommended I take a look at, and I stuck it up there. So if you got any thoughts or anything, here's my health and death stocks, SCI, which is a funeral uh, uh, service corporation. Again, I think between haircuts, you know, hair salons and uh, 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 undertakers, <laughs> both are recession-proof businesses in my opinion, especially undertakers. You know, one thing that people don't do even in the worst of times, we don't leave our dead laying on the street to rot. So uh, that's a service that's always going to be in uh, in demand. And uh, here's my uh, precious metal stocks. Uh, this is Amark, actually, Amark Precious Metal, who owns uh, Johnson, uh, uh, who owns uh, JM uh, Bullion, who owns Silvertown. They are like the 800-pound gorilla of online sellers out there, but their stock's done pretty well over the few years, too. And uh, these are silver miners, so a lot of you are familiar with silver miners. Take a look here. If you think I'm missing any good silver miners, please uh, put it in the comments, and I'll uh, consider adding it on here. Uh, shipping stocks, FedEx, UPS, uh, social media, which I would never buy Facebook. Screw Facebook. Uh, I don't care if they double up in the next year. I hate that company now. Obviously, you guys know why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've told you enough times, uh, censorship, censorship. So uh, this company as well, and this company as well, probably at some point. Uh, and technology, what's my technology stocks? Apple, of course. I'll be adding more to this, but uh, um, stock market looks like it's uh, kind of uh, sitting sideways right now. Oh, hang on a second, let's take a look, Seeking Alpha. Great site, by the way, I highly recommend it. I do subscribe to it. 
Uh, they've got some good uh, articles on precious metals, too, I'll show you. You can read those for free. Uh, these articles here, I'll show you in a second. And w what's the market doing out there? We're not a stock market uh, show, but uh, uh, ooh, it looks like kind of across the board and kind of swimming sideways. Uh, are we going to see that big drop in uh, equities this year? I don't know. A lot of people think it's going to be soon. Well, cryptos, too, uh, have taken a little fall there. Uh, just across the board, I saw that uh, BC kind of dropped below that 46 mark for a little bit. However, you know, uh, love cryptos or hate cryptos, and I'm ambivalent about them. I understand them. You know, a lot of people may confuse because I'm not in the crypto market. I don't plan on buying them at all. Uh, I don't really believe in them per se, but I'm a capitalist, you know. So, of course, if I believe that uh, casinos in Las Vegas should be legal, which I do, I think people should be able to bet their money on anything that doesn't hurt other people. I mean, if you want to bet on a, a coin toss, I mean, I'm cool with that. If you want to make an ETF over the coin toss, I don't know how you do it, but I'm cool with that. You know, but let's, let's paint things for what they are, and that's what I've done with Bitcoin for a while. Uh, but no less, I've said that, uh, you know, two years ago I was telling the Bitcoin community uh, that they were in big trouble. They, they, they were all happy that the big whales were coming in, you know, the big giant whales, the big whale investors, the big whale entities, the corporations uh, were getting involved. They're going to make an ETF. Yay! Um, and I'm, I, I warned over and over that was the end of the uh, Bitcoin uh, market once that happened uh, for two reasons, that governments and bankers hate competition, that they would either make Bitcoin illegal or they would relegate it and regulate it uh, to a uh, glorified money market account that moves up and down a little bit depending on, depending on uh, how many customers are in and out of it. So, well, let's move along to that. You know my opinion on that stuff. But uh, down a little bit, you know, would, would I, am I saying that I would never buy Bitcoin? Eh, probably not. I think it's kind of here to stay a little bit, but it'd have to take a dramatic drop for me to, to drop money in that casino. And again, that's what I look at as a casino. Highly volatile with the opportunity to make some really good money if you kind of time it the right way. But again, I think that volatility, extreme volatility is pretty much gone because again, they've regulated and they've relegated it to a uh, Wall Street type market and the whales are in it. And whales are there to do nothing but eat small fish. And we're small fish folks. Uh, great article I mentioned yesterday that was uh, uh, put, this has everything to do with precious metals, folks. It really does. I read this article, uh, I think uh, Mr. Rogan had this guy on the other day uh, on his uh, podcast, and uh, uh, pretty sad state of affairs, folks, uh, what's going on out there, especially the censorship level, but no less. A uh, good article that uh, I want to, let me see if I can, uh, how long is this article? Take a quick read. And uh, all right, I think we can read through this real quick. And I, I'm going to uh, do this one for you quickly. And it's actually the only article of any kind of size I'm going to go over here. Uh, as many of you know, I have spent time researching and speaking about mass psychosis theory. Most of what I have learned has come from uh, uh, Mr. DeSement, Dr. DeSement, who realized that this form of mass hypnosis of the madness of crowds can account for a strange phenomenon of about 20 to 30 percent of the population in the Western world be being, becoming entranced with noble lies a dominant narrative, folks, remember dominant narratives, that's what we talk about all the time, narratives. And that's why I'm saying this year, always question authority uh, and question yourself uh, because you've got a narrative that was not painted by you. Make sure it's a good one. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the safe and effectiveness of general uh, genetic, uh, uh, I'm not even going to say the word, and both propagated and enforced by politicians, scientists, uh, science bureaucrats, he nailed that properly. That's exactly what most of Mars, that's what uh, uh, Fauci is, uh, uh, is science bureaucrat, pharmaceutical co companies, and legacy media. What one observes with mass hypnosis is that a large fraction of the population is completely unable to process new scientific data and facts, demonstrating that they have been misled about the effectiveness and adverse, adverse impacts of uh, of this right here, uh, lockdowns, genetic vaccin vaccines that cause people's bodies to make large amounts of biologically active uh, these. <laughs> Again, I'm just trying to avoid uh, uh, getting uh, flagged here too much. Uh, these hypnotized, those hypnotized by the process are unable to recognize the lies and misrepresentation they are being bombarded with on a daily basis and actively attack anyone who has the temerity to share information, temerity, I'm sorry, uh, to share information with which contradicts the propaganda that they have come to embrace. Um, and again, hence my, my thing, think for yourself and always question authority, something that we have sadly not done for decades now, folks. It's been a big issue here. 
Um, and, and for those with families and social networks that have been torn apart by this process, who find that close relatives and friends have ghosted them because it, they question the official endorsed narrative, the so-called truth, and now are actually following science literature. This can be a source of deep anguish, sorrow, and psychological pain. And folks, I've had it involved, and I'm sure you folks have too. You know, they got us fighting over this stuff. They got us fighting with our brothers and our sisters. From elections to viruses, they got us fighting with each other, folks. We are not your brothers, your sisters, even if we disagree, your neighbors, even if we disagree, uh, which is okay because politics and economics is a lot about opinions, all right? There's data behind it, there's facts behind it, but it's a lot about opinions. It's okay to have a different opinion. It's not okay to hate someone because they have a different opinion. And this is not a result of us. This is, we've been hypnotized to fight each other when the real enemy is the people in control, the people in power. The, uh, the officials, government officials are your enemy. Gov I mean, not all of them, and, and, get, and, and understand what I'm saying here, right? The lies, the narratives, the, the bullshit, that we, and, and the fact that we've allowed them to think for us for so long. Um, they treat us like children, if that even. They treat us almost like slaves now. It's in our face so much. Fact is, folks, you haven't been questioning them. You haven't been holding their, their feet to the fire. You haven't, we haven't in general. And that needs to change and it will change. We are changing this. Um, and what does this have to do with the price of gold and silver? Again, I reiterate it over and over. As, as, as society decays, as the economy decays uh, with society, which they go hand in hand, uh, the price of gold and silver are going to increase steadily because it's been around for 5,000 years. It's out survived these types of events, these types of people. So uh, it's a great place to, in my opinion, to uh, have wealth preservation at the very least. And at, at, and, and at best, you could see a, uh, an extreme bubble in precious metals as well, which at that point, you are going to sell some, hopefully, take advantage of a gold and silver bubble, which I hope we'll see, uh, and then buy back in when it drops back and you know diversify into other things as well. Uh, so anyways, sorry. Andy, we're talking about truth, OK? Uh, it, is, it is with these souls in mind that I included a discussion of the mass formation theory of uh, Mr. DeSemet, Dr. DeSemet, during a recent talk I gave in Tampa, Florida, to an audience of about 2,000. As I looked out into the audience and spoke, I could see relief of many faces and even tears running from the eyes of stoic men, uh, which sounds a little sappy to me, but you know what? It's, it's life-changing. You know, when you perceive something to be the truth your whole life, I mean, and, and uh, I mean, think of it it's like Santa Claus. Think about kids that were told Santa Claus is not real by someone. Some, a lot of them cry. You know? So it's because it's not because you, you miss Santa Claus or anything like that. It's, it's because you fell for it. It's because you feel suckered. It's because you feel used and abused. And that's what we've gotten into. They've lied to us so much, folks. But, uh, and they've done it with the gold and silver markets as well, with the COMEX markets. Um, you know, with the big banks, the COMEX allowing these uh, banks to screw us consistently. It's not indifferent to what we're talking about here, okay? Uh, or or not, not that much different. It, it all ties in uh, with this stuff. Uh, so let me take a look and keep reading because it'll be easy for me to digress. <laughs> Unknown to me, someone recorded the speech and appended the vocal track. Okay, so uh, I'm going to skip over that. And you can read this right here yourself. Uh, a brief overview of mass formation. Uh, let's take a brief overview. Uh, so when he says mass formation, you can think of this as equivalent to crowd formation, or one can think of this as crowd psychosis. Uh, the, condition, the conditions, and this is what's happened all over the world, folks. It's not just the United States. It's worse in some countries. It's worse in France and Canada. It's worse in Europe. It's worse in UK. I mean, those, peop those poor people are in a constant barrage of narratives and psychosis, crowd psychosis. Uh, even the UK government admitted that it's using crowd psychosis against its own UK citizens. They admitted it recently. And under what guise? Your own good. The most evil people in history have always said that we're doing this for your own good. Well, some good people too, parents as well, but uh, uh, evil people use that. And government, whenever government says we're doing this for your own good, uh, for the most part uh, of the late, you can run away, folks. You really should. Uh, when they say we're the government, we're here to help you close that fucking door. <laughs> uh, give me one second here. Because even if they do help you, it's going to cost you a fortune. 
the conditions to set up mass formation psychosis include lack of social connectedness and sense making, as well as large amounts of latent anxiety and passive aggression. When people are inundated with a narrative, okay, again, narrative, we see this with the gold and silver markets um, for years and years, the narrative that nothing was fixed, nothing was wrong, that if you thought that gold and silver markets were uh, um, uh, uh, manipulated, you were a conspiracy, ten fa ten, tinfoil hat wear, okay, but we know this is not true. Uh, when people are inundated with narrative that presents a plausible object of anxiety and strategy for coping with it, then many individual groups together battle the object with a collective single-mindedness. This allows people to stop focusing on their own problems, avoiding personal mental anguish. Instead, they focus all their thought and energy on this new object. Um, well, sadly, this is true. As mass formation progresses, the group becomes increasingly bonded and connected. Their field of attention is narrowed, and they become unable to consider alternative points of view. Uh, sound familiar, folks, especially when it comes to censorship with Twitter, Facebook, and the other big social media companies? And you've met some of these people that are narrow-minded and unable to consider any alternate point of view. They're brainwashed. They actually work for these uh, social media companies as well, and they work for government, too. Uh, and uh, the media helps out with that, strengthening those narratives, uh, lying bastards that they are. Turn off that TV, folks. Uh, leaders of the movement are revered, unable to do no wrong. And again, you see this every day now, folks, sadly. Uh, left unabated, society under the spell of mass formation will support a totalitarian governance structure capable of otherwise unthinkable atrocities in order to maintain compliance. We're going to get into a little article here where we can see that starting to happen in France with Macron, Macron, uh, Macron or whatever the hell his name is. A note. Mass formation is different from groupthink. There are easy ways to fix groupthink by just bringing in dissenting voices and making sure you give them platforms. It isn't easy with mass formation. Even when the narrative falls apart, cracks in the strategies clearly aren't solving the issue. The, the hypnotized crowd can't break free of the narrative. This is what appears to be happening now with the critter. Uh, the critter, uh, okay. Uh, the solution for those in control of the narrative is to produce bigger and bigger lies to prop up the solution. Those being controlled by the mass formation no longer are able to use reason to break free of the group narrative. And again, folks, we see this every day now. It's getting worse and worse. Uh, of course, the obvious exam uh, example of mass formation is Germany in the 1930s and 40s. How could the German people who were highly educated, very liberal in the classic sense, Western thinking people. How could they go crazy and do what they did uh, to the Jewish people? How could this happen uh, to civilized people, really? Uh, and they were, folks. These weren't monsters back then. It happened to civilized, liberal, class in the classical sense, Western thinking people. Um, a leader of mass formation movement will use the platform to continue to pump the group with new information to focus on. In the case of Critter, uh, I like to use the term fear porn. Uh, leaders through mainstream media and government channels continuously feed the beast with more messaging that focuses, further, uh, further hypnotizes the adherence of this fear porn. Uh, let me get a sip of coffee here. We're almost out of here, too. Uh, I just thought this was so important to share, and it doesn't just apply to this again. It applies to our markets and everything around us, folks, the narrative that they paint, the lies that they give us, and continually over and over, uh, whether it's uh, economic markets, gold and silver markets, political, whatever. Uh, and here, sip of coffee, moment of silence. Studies suggest that mass formation follows a general distribution. 30% are brainwashed, hypnotized, indoctrinated by a group narrative. 40% in the middle are persuadable and may follow if no worthy alternative is perceived. And 30% fight against the narrative. Uh, those that rebel and fight against the narrative become the enemy of the brainwashed. Uh, these become the enemy of these people and are a primary target of their aggression. One of the best ways to counter mass formation is for those against the narrative to con continue to speak out against it. Folks, that's what we do here. Am I right? And I'm sure if I'm doing this, you're doing this as well because you're smarter than the average bear. We are. That's why you're listening to us. <laughs> that's why you're listening to this uh, video right here, uh, primarily to uh, learn more about gold and silver, but it all ties in, uh, which serves to help break the hypnosis and some that the brainwash group as well as persuade the persuadable middle to choose reason over mindlessness. Folks, this is a fight between us who are fighting the narrative, and again, not just about the critter, but about gold and silver uh, manipulation, about uh, our economy, about being uh, uh, the Fed printing, overprinting money, about fiat money. Is this, we fight the narrative, folks. We are fighting the good fight. And who are we fighting? We're fighting 30% of the people that are brainwashed, hypnotized, hypnotized, indoctrinated by the group narrative. And what are we fighting for? We're fighting to get these people right here, the other 40%. 
between us to, to follow us here, all right? And to do that, you have to put out a good argument. You have to put out a good debate that includes solid data and solid facts. And uh, that's what we're here to do. Um, well, let's move down. We're almost done with this right here. It's right here, folks. Uh, those that rebel against the narrative become the enemy of the brainwash and primary target of aggression. And we've seen that happen. That's why Twitter uh, kicked off a lot of people. That's why Facebook kicked me off Facebook, because I spoke against their narrative. Uh, one of the best ways to counter mass formation is for those uh, against the narrative to continue to speak out, which serves to break the hypnosis of some of the brainwash group, as well as persuade the persuadable middle to choose reason over mindlessness. I'm sorry I read that twice. Uh, Doctor says that he suggests that for something as big as the critter, the only way to break the uh, mass formation psychosis is to give the crowd something bigger to focus on. He believes that to total tend <laughs> I can't even say it now. Totalitarianism may be the bigger issue. Of course, after critter, global totalitarianism may be the biggest issue over time, folks. The critter was just another uh, a step in the ladder uh, upwards to totalitarianism, to where they want to take over everything. We've been seeing this happen for years, uh, and it's not just a critter, okay? This ties into precious metal markets. Uh, again, I reiterate over and over that this doesn't just apply to uh, the critter here. It applies to everything in our life. And uh, again, what's to be learned here? Think for yourself and question authority, folks. Spread the news there, man. Tell your friends, tell your family, make sure your kids do the same. Have your kids question you. Never be afraid to have your kids question you. You want them questioning you. You don't want them living someone else's narrative. Uh, and you don't want to be there either. Uh, <laughs> you can see I've got a couple things here. Well, we're out of here. And uh, a couple charts I want to look at. Uh, I saw this the other day. Uh, United States Misery Index charts. But unemployment rate by year, this does not look good. They haven't stuck in. Uh, but apparently, here's the, uh, what we're looking at as far as, I think, similar times. As far as an inflationary environment, there's Carter right there. You can see 7, 6, 7%. Seven Again, I'm not sure if this is adjusted for inflation. But I suspect that we're going to see uh, uh, higher than eight right here with Trump, uh, or no, with the new Biden administration. This is probably going to be off the chart. The misery, uh, the misery chart is probably going to be off the chart uh, when the new Biden numbers come up, which should be pretty soon here. I, I'm surprised they haven't listed them yet. Actually, very surprised they haven't put the 2021 numbers up yet. Well, you want to see something really scary? How many remember this movie with Dan Aykroyd? I think it was. Tales from the Crypt or something like that, but uh, you want to see something really scary, uh, let's take a look here and uh, where, where was it? We're going to get into uh, smarter, there's my smarter than the average bear uh, uh, meme. <laughs> uh, the impact of higher inflation on U.S. asset returns. I'm not going to read this to you. This is not homework. I will call it suggested reading because nobody likes homework. Uh, suggested reading, uh, really good free website, uh, American Institute of Economic Research. It talks about the impact of higher inflation on the U.S. As asset class. Um, which U.S. asset classes perform best or worse amid periods of high inflation? 6% or more you're talking about. Answer, commodities perform best. What is gold and silver? Gold and silver is a tangible commodity. Um, again, really good article here. Let me see, uh, uh, where's that chart I wanted to show you? Uh, very technical too, so I'd read it all to you for you technical folks. Again, go here, read it for yourself. It's uh, the front page, the impact of higher inflation on U.S. asset class of returns uh, by the American Institute for Economic Research. Uh, but interestingly enough, there's a little chart down here. Here it is, right here. Uh, let's just move, blow it up for you a little bit. But uh, low, low interest rate, a CPI rate of 3% or lower. It's going to show you the different thing. Equities have performed very well. And of course, what have we seen with low inflation that we've had uh, for quite some time? We've seen an uh, excellent equities market. Uh, bonds perform second best. And uh, what is CP that's a CPI rate. And uh, there's the uh, uh, bills right there and commodities perform terribly uh, during low interest rates here, uh, or a CPI rate, I'm sorry, interest rates, I confuse the two. Uh, CPI rate, uh, which is, uh, you know, consumer price index, uh, has to do with inflation. Uh, during moderate inflation, between three and 6%, uh, it looks like equities still are doing okay at 9.1%. And uh, bonds are the second best, no, actually uh, commodities are going to be the second best performer, bonds third, and uh, bills uh, uh, fourth here. Uh, however, in a, in a times, again, real total returns on U.S. At cl asset classes under low, moderate, and high inflations from November 1971 to uh, November 2021. What performs best, absolutely best in, term, in, in times of high inflation? 
Uh, and again, a lot of folks are going to say, well, it's, you know, we're seeing inflation. Gold takes and silver when it comes to the money supply and inflation. I have noticed in the past takes a little while to catch up. We haven't seen the catch up yet. And I, su I really suspect that the catch up is going to be you're going to wake up one morning and I'm going to wake up one morning and I'm, I'm going to start the video with the word holy shit. All right. That's how I think it's going to happen. But high inflation rates typically are very good. Look at this. Number one performer in high inflation rates in the past has been gold and silver. Uh, and uh, what's the second best performer? Oh, there's the CPI. Uh, it'd be hard to uh, call it here. They're all pretty terrible in high inflation rates. So inflation rates. So what this article is basically talking about is that uh, we're probably looking at commodities are going to start doing very well. Gold and silver will catch up with the uh, uh, excessive money printing that we've seen over the last decade and the inflation uh, and should perform very well based on uh, historical data. Okay. Uh, great article here, lots of good graphs. Again, more technical for you technical folks here, but I do highly recommend you read it. Again, free, uh, free to read. Go to American Institute for Economic Research. And I mentioned this a few times. Put this on your bookmark bar. This is, uh, you should look at all the articles they, they put here once a week. They put some great stuff out here. Uh, again, not your tippet, typical narrative corporate trash that you see in Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, uh, CNBC, uh, uh, and, you know, whatever. Uh, Fox Business, not the typical trash you see there. This is good stuff here, folks. Uh, and it will make you, oh boy, there's a perfect chance to use that meme. If you read that site consistently, it will make you smarter than the average bear for sure. Uh, something I wanted to show you before we close out this video and get to uh, uh, yesterday's video and answer some questions in the comment section is none of this bodes well. Look at the M2, folks. Now, the M2. Um, um, I was trying to tell the difference between the M2 and the M1. I was having a little bit of difficulty with the big difference between the two. They're similar in how they describe things, but nothing looks good here. I mean, look, from 19, let's just even go from uh, 2008. There's a, a recession there. There's a recession there. Recession depression. There's a mini one there. Uh, but look where this line has been going ever since, okay? The M2. Let's look at the M1. The M1's even more scarier. Uh, after 2020, look, they just pulled out all the stops. The M1 is supposed to be money that actually is in the hands of people, more or less. M2 is a little more hard for me to figure out exactly what it means. Is it money in institutions' hands? I don't know. Uh, that would explain why, since 2008 and, or earlier, that the Fed's probably been uh, bailing out institutions or something like that. Again, not quite sure how to read the difference between the two, but take a look at this spike on the M1 after 2020. My God, that is just frightening to every degree, folks. Think about that. Look at that. <laughs> the M1 is just, in, look, that's, that is something to be fearful of. And uh, what else to be fearful of? Look, the declining chart since then. Uh, I suspect 2021, we're going to see even um, a, a further drop like this. This is the purchasing power of the consumer dollar. Folks, none of this is good for us as an economy, as a country. Uh, again, we, you got to start questioning authority and thinking for yourself more. And, and this it requires you and I to take a look at who's running for offices in, in this two-party uh, duopoly, two-party monopoly. You'll call it a duopoly. But basically, it's a monopoly by two parties. They control all the thoughts, ideas, and the, and the uh, budget, and the checkbook, and everything. And they screw us year after year. They all do. Just happens to be that the one particular party, the blue party, is really horrible when it comes to a checkbook, even worse than the red party. And that's saying something. The red party has never done anything fiscally conservative for years and years and years. There's not a fiscal conservative bone in the red party. But when the blue party makes them look good, <laughs> it's called the lesser of evils as far as economic Economic goes, economics goes, and uh, who's actually really fiscally conservative? Neither party is, okay? Uh, but one is way worse than the other. And I'd say the blue party is far worse. Never give the blue party the checkbook, ever. Never give socialists, progressives, and especially Marxists and communists a checkbook, ever, ever. Um, and that seems to be what we've done here. Well, <laughs> Uh, I don't even like giving the, the red people the uh, checkbook because they're just going to, one spends it on bums, or one spends it on wars and, uh, 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 and corporations bullshit. The other one spends it on bums and, uh, you know, I just said bums and bullets. One spends it on bums, the other on bullets, all right? So neither one of them are any good, in my opinion. We need to have some more parties in there. I digress, though, as I always do. Uh, not too much to talk about in gold and silver markets here in ZH. Uh, I'm just going to make my snarky comments. 
<laughs> on uh, what I think uh, banned, of course banned, you know what I mean? You know why they banned it? Uh, this is what I'm talking about, folks. If, 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 if these brainwashed people, uh, they're banning what they don't want to hear. Uh, it's cognitive dissonance times 10. Uh, as far as uh, this kind of stuff, this guy's a complete fucking moron in my opinion. Excuse me, I threw in a few F-bombs today, but it hasn't been too bad. Um, I'm getting used to <laughs> morons now. Uh, it, it, the Europe, he, Europe has just gone absolutely insane. Could you imagine that this gentleman actually is trying to do this, piss people off? Uh, this article just talks about how he is highly unlikely to get elected um, in the next elections, unless, of course, they cheat, which wouldn't surprise me. Uh, integrity of elections, uh, like and the integrity of, uh, of uh, politicians, the integrity of uh, uh, the officials that work for these politicians and the integrity of elections to me is nearing zero. But let's see what happens. Uh, he pissed off a lot of people by saying that. And uh, uh, let's see, futures tread water with trade. China has worse year. Uh, Mercedes Benz runs up. Uh, nothing too much again. I'm going to get out of here. Usually there's a couple articles I like to read, but it's the same old shit, folks. We, you, we could talk about most of this stuff day after day after day. And I'm getting tired of look, talking about the critter anyway. Uh, quite frankly, and the idiots that uh, use the critter to fuck us and make us fight amongst ourselves. Uh, sick of them bastards, too. Guys like this, people like this, people like uh, uh, the current administration president we have, people like uh, Trudeau in uh, Canada. Uh, uh, these people need to go, folks. They really do. And uh, where are we going from here? GATA.org. Not going to read any articles here because you should be doing this already. Um, it's my suggested reading for you smart bears out there. Uh, or smarter than the average bears out there. Uh, how gold mining merger tightened companies hold in Nevada. Kind of interesting story, but really eh, it doesn't play into much. Maybe uh, maybe the company itself, um, uh, the mining or company itself, maybe you know that might tell you whether to buy or sell them. I don't know. Uh, India. This was the most interesting article in here. India more than doubled its gold imports in 2021. So it looks like India has uh, turned the burners up again, and they're some of the strongest buyers of gold in the world. A lot of people confuse it. They say, oh, India buys jewelry, gold jewelry. Uh, you know, and, uh, jewelry. The, the, when India buys jewelry, uh, when an Indian family buys uh, gold, they don't buy it in bars typically or coins. They buy it in a jewelry form. They buy it from local goldsmith who take 24 karat gold coins, turn it into jewelry, and that's how they like to. That's how they like to buy their gold. Typically, this is uh, they've been doing that for thousands of years like that. Uh, but n nice to see that India has doubled its gold imports since 2021 good sign and probably a good indication why gold has been so strong. I think gold again is going to lead silver up. Gold prices rising is going to be what is going to cause these shorts to fail uh, because uh, um, it, it's, going, it's going to. No matter what happens, gold is going up in value for sure. And uh, let's see what else is going on, regardless of the monkey hammering that they're trying to do out there. Gold is going to continue to go up. And I think that's going to drag silver up for sure. And uh, it's going to blow those short positions to hell, hopefully. Uh, good. Uh, I'd like to thank all the Wall Street apes. I say this every day, but uh, uh, I like reading this Reddit Wall Street uh, uh, Silver Group. I like to thank the apes that watch me out here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to just scroll down and see what everyone's buying here. They're, people like to post what they buy, which I'm cool with. But remember, don't post your name or any identifying uh, things to yourself because the last thing you want to do is come home and find your stash gone uh, because you put you, you know put pictures online of what you own and someone knew who you were um, and uh, worst of all I don't want to see you get an arm robbery too so keep this stuff tight to your you know, tight to your vest if you're going to share this kind of stuff with others out there again make sure there's no connection to uh, like that name there's no connection to you or an address okay uh, what is he buying here um, those are probably a good deal. Those are the uh, Brit Britannias right there. And if he's paying no more than spot plus like four bucks or something, uh, he's probably okay. And maybe four bucks or less for these right here. They might run a tiny bit more for Britannia spot plus four and a quarter. But if he's getting them at that level or less, you're doing okay there, pal. And I uh, hope you don't mind I called you pal. Sorry about that. <laughs> and uh, always kind of great memes out here. Let me just kind of see what other people are buying. I've been lurking here since when I bought my first 100 ounce bar. Congratulations, Mr. Ape. Uh, silver is nearly gone. One billionaire can buy what's left above ground. You know, it's kind of true. This is an interesting meme. Uh, you know, it seems uh, uh, it's a very interesting meme because I wonder what happened if a billionaire like uh, uh, 
And you know what? He could use it in his manufacturing. You know, if anybody should probably be buying silver on large scales, probably Elon Musk, in my opinion. Uh, think about that. He can use it for his companies, photoelectric uh, stuff and uh, uh, batteries. So, uh, and plus, he'd probably make a fortune. Uh, but you know, he's already make a fortune. He's already got a fortune. Why does he need to make a fortune? Uh, let's see here. And I'm just looking for products here. And <laughs> pretty cute. Let's see. Oh, someone's putting out, uh, who is that? J.M. Bullion, the 800-pound gorilla out there. Let's see what kind of deal they've got. 10-ounce sunshine bars, 279 uh, 17 I don't think that's a great deal. I think your local dealers can give you a better price than that. Hang on a second. 23 $26.75. Uh, $26. Yeah, you can buy from your local dealers 10-ounce bars. Maybe not sunshines, but 10-ounce bars. Uh, I believe for uh, maybe a tad over $20, $270, but not much more. So that's not a great price. Your local coin dealer should be able to beat that pretty easily. I can. Uh, again, if you live in my area in South Florida, I can definitely beat J.M. Bullion's prices on those. Um, <laughs> pretty cool. Silver stacker, gold stacker. Um, Silver stacker is not made for weak hands. Probably not, but again, as I said earlier, you really need to be diversified into these muscles. Pretty cute meme. And I was looking down here for someone that was posting their purchases. There we go. Uh, JPM. Uh, let's see what kind of stuff this gentleman's bought. You know, it's nice to see because I think some of these guys are really buying the uh, lower premium bars. I, those look like lower premium bars. Uh, that looks like a custom-made bar. I'm not quite sure. But, if you're, if you, again, if you're stacking just for the sake of stacking silver, um, not collecting pretty shiny things, then don't pay more than spot plus four bucks for anything right now. There's great products out there for spot plus four bucks or less with your local dealers. Um, and uh, hit his first 10 ounces, congratulations, dude. And there's, there's a guy following in my advice. He bought some gold as well. You know, the one gram bar doesn't seem a lot. What's it got, 58, 59 bucks a gram or something like that if you're pure gold? But 10% is 10%. So 10% on a bar on silver is the same as, you know, 10% on his uh, one gram bar. He'll make $5.90. He makes 10% on two silver bars, he'll make $5 or something. So it's all relative, even though it looks so tiny. It's hard to kind of swallow sometimes, especially for silver guys. Um, Oh, good bars again. Pay less than four bucks an ounce. You know what? I'm going to move out of here and go into uh, yesterday's video. Uh, by the way, kind of cool here. Um, not even cool. <laughs> I have been doing this a long time. Take a look. I was just looking. I started. It's almost been two years now. Every day, five days a week. And by the way, I'm going to a show today. Uh, so uh, I'll do the report up there. They might be a little short until next Monday, but I will get these reports done. Let's take a look at yesterday's video here. And... Uh, uh, see the talking heads and let's turn off that ad it's funny that they put crypto ads on my uh, on my page <laughs> I think these crypto advertisers if they knew what I was talking about on crypto they probably wouldn't want to advertise on my videos but no less who cares uh, let's take a look here and see what's going on I'm gonna pump this up I want to answer some questions hey listen if I miss some questions this week I know a few of you made some on some earlier videos and I really do apologize I generally like to hit them all. In fact, maybe I'll take a look at yesterday's video as well, or the day before, and try to hit them. Um, thank you very much. Again, I'm looking for primary questions, but I can't thank you, uh, 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 regular subscribers, enough for uh, uh, all the nice things that you say. Uh, thank you, guys. And a bit of off-topic question: How do you? How does deflation affect physical gold and silver prices? I get the effects it has on prices; as they go down. However, I don't understand why it affects precious metals that way. Uh, gosh, that's a good question, man. That take me a little time to really think about. Uh, how does deflation affect physical gold and silver prices? Uh, deflation, you mean as far as uh, price deflation and products in general? Deflation and currency? Deflation and currency is good for the price of gold and silver ultimately. Uh, but you're talking about just you know in general when when uh, uh, the economy just kind of blah and uh, prices aren't going up. In fact, prices are going down. I really don't think it's really any better for gold and silver deflationary environment um, uh, because everything's cheap uh, in an inflationary environment definitely would be way better than for gold and silver but you know what I'm a bit confused on how to answer that properly so quite frankly any of you other commenters out there please go to uh, uh, yesterday's video which was huge silver short positions and uh, uh, chime in what you think uh, as far as uh, is how does deflation affect gold and silver prices I'd like to read it myself and Dave says, uh, don't forget that these low interest rates are subsidiary for each institution that sold interest rate swaps to municipalities. 
Uh, that's very, very true. County, state utilities in the mid 2000s, the idea that interest rates would never go down. Once interest rates went down, the cost of those derivatives went sky high. That was a real reason for Michigan's financial problem 10, year, 10 years ago. Uh, abs wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, comment there. Thank you, Dave. You're absolutely true, uh, absolutely correct there. And uh, Don Robinson, good to see you commenting. Thank you very much. Uh, as is uh, Spanduda, Spanuda. <laughs> I'm going to try not to. I'm butchering words sometimes. Uh, please do a bid from the coin show if you're able. I want to make this year, but shooting for next year. Uh, I'll do a preview up there. I'm not sure I'm going to do it live up there. What I'll do is maybe I'll shoot some video walking around the show because that's so hard to upload uh, and it takes forever and I never can get the shows done. Uh, but maybe I'll take some video up there and, and do a little sideshow on the coins and stuff like that. Thanks for watching, Tart. Appreciate it. Hope to meet you next year. Uh, excellent. Thank you, sir. Eli, uh, Emer, uh, Huckleberry. Uh, yep, thank you, sir. And here. Hey, some friends, some, some Aussies from down under, uh, Middle Cove Motors. Thanks for commenting down there. Uh, they just dig it up from the backyard during barbecues. <laughs> dig a hole in the ground, find some gold, go buy some beer, and then they throw the meat in. Yeah, I, I like it. Uh, geez, come on, silver UFOs got to make a smart alecky comment there. Pretty funny. <laughs> and of course, it's humongous. Oh, I love you commenters out there. You guys are great. Um, uh, William, hey, what's up? Uh, thanks for watching, sir. I really appreciate it. I, and again, I appreciate all you regular uh, viewers out there. I really, really do. <laughs> I'm beside myself when I think about it sometimes. Um, should you, Cloudly or Monk, should you put $1,000 in gold or silver this week? You know, Cloudly, I don't want to, I can't give advice on here because, you know, you can go from hero to zero. And I'm not, you know, my only advice is just question the authorities. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, think for yourself. And, uh, you know, you're not going to get hurt stacking precious metals as a uh, source of wealth preservation. As far as which you should put your money into, it's really, an, you know, if you watch my videos, I, I believe you should be diversified into both different metals. And really, that's a choice up to you. But I don't think you're going to go wrong, personally, in my opinion, uh, doing either one. Or mixing it up in both. Mix it up in both. Why not? Why not? Or if you don't have any gold at all, put it in silver, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, try to mix it up a little bit. Thanks for watching. Nice to see you post. Uh, where does the Commerce Department come into play? I don't know. I don't think they come into play at all when it comes to precious metals. Again, precious metals is uh, uh, regulated by the CFTC, who is under the, uh, 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 who is under the uh, 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 leadership of the Agricultural Committee. Don't ask me why or how, but that's probably why they get away with so much shit. They should be under the... Uh, 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 they should be under like some kind of commerce department or some kind of uh, the SEC. I think the SEC should uh, uh, be taking care of uh, uh, CF, you know, instead of the CFTC, uh, which is worthless. But anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate that comment. Thank you, folks, all of you, Mr. Bick as well, and uh, uh, Bill. Uh, yep, Reddit's want uh, sound money system too. I do see guys out there talking about it. Nice to see. I'm going to consider joining this right here. I'll let you know. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, good morning, sir. If there were 10 billion ounces of silver stackers with 6 billion people averaging 1.5 per ounce, uh, and I'm a small guy, that means nearly 4,000 people have none. Hmm, interesting math there. Thanks for uh, uh, pointing that out as well. Well, I'm going to call it quits here. My name is Brian Kuzmar. I am a, uh, a full-time precious metal dealer and rare coin dealer since 1977. Second generation been doing this. Um, every day <laughs> and uh, I have a brick and mortar store here in South Florida so if you live outside my area unfortunately I can't I can't sell you anything because we don't do any shipping the only way you can buy from me is uh, uh, come in locally into my brick and mortar store between 10 and 4 Mondays through Fridays um, however if you don't live in my area and you can't come and visit me to buy stuff I encourage you to buy local whoever your local bullion and precious metal dealer is I like to uh, find I would recommend finding someone that's been in business for at least 10 years and uh, call them up, use your gut feeling, use your gut feeling, and ask them if they can beat or meet the uh, online, the big online sellers. Uh, if they can, you got yourself a winner there, folks. Uh, they may not be as handsome and smart as me, but hey, you can let it, you can let that pass. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, when I talk to you tomorrow, I'll be at a show, and have yourself a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.